if you're responsible for capacity planning in your organization, then you need a simple but effective tool to assist you in successful planning. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a solution using Microsoft Excel, which you can use to simplify project management and take smarter decisions. As a project manager, on one side, you have resources with capacity available. And then on the other hand, you have tasks or projects that need to be completed. So your objective is to, number one, ensure that all the tasks can be completed. Number two, the resources are used efficiently. So you need both effectiveness and efficiency. Now let's go and take a live look at the Excel file where I will walk you through an overview of how you can use this template for your project planning. So I have the template open now, and this is the setting sheet where I have defined a starting date for my project planning window. And then the template can accommodate up to two years of project planning. I define the list of roles or skills of my resources. I define a list of categories of my projects because the template can support multiple projects. The list of resources and each resource is assigned a specific role. And a list of projects that I'm managing and each project is assigned to a category. I also have a list of company holidays. This will be used when the template calculates the capacity. Then I enter in the capacity sheet, my resource, the start and end date of the availability of that resource, and how many hours every day is the resource being available during that window of time. The template can handle multiple resources, each resource having a different availability hours each weekday. And you can also have resources taking a break and coming back after a few weeks. And you can enter a new row in this uh, sheet with a different start and end date for the same resource. So very practical uh, and applicable in realistic scenarios. Once you enter this inf information, the template will automatically calculate you the capacity. So the what is the total number of hours this resource is available during this window of time. I will skip talking about the assigned demand now because I'll talk about that later. Now let's go to the vacation overtime sheet, which is where we enter if any resource is available to work overtime, then you can enter them here with the positive hours. And if the person is planning to take time off, then you enter negative value. And this is how the template can accommodate realistic scenarios where there will be people who will be taking time off. There may be people who are uh, available to work overtime on specific days. You can enter them in this table. Then we go to the demand sheet. Demand sheet is where you enter specific tasks that need to be completed and you enter a task and give any name to the task, and then you assign it to a project. And then you define a role that this task needs to be done by. So this is, you can think of this as the type of skill that is needed to perform that work, and you can choose a specific role. And you can define the start and end date for this task. The resource name is a dropdown that automatically you know, populates with the values of resources who belong to that role. So it's very, very helpful for you so that you don't assign it to a resource who cannot perform that task. Then, then you have the number of hours that that specific task will require to be completed, and I can enter them. Once I enter that, the demand is automatically calculated. So this is the total number of hours that this task requires and um, assigned a demand is looking into, you have assigned this task to Adams. And is Adams actually available from 10th March to 25th March uh, 2023 here? If yes, then the total demand can be assigned. But let's say, for example, the row number six. Here, Yakub is the resource. And here, the assigned demand is less than the, than the total demand for the task. And this is because the start date of this task is 2nd February 2023, but Yakub, let's look at the capacity sheet, Yakub is only starting employment on 1st March 2023. So 
this assignment is not going to be fully successful because Yakub is not even starting employment when this task is starting. This is why it is highlighted with a red border. And now this informs you that you need to take corrective action. Either you can increase the availability of Yakub uh, by making him start earlier, or you can assign this task to somebody else. Um, so Yakub, uh, instead of Yakub, you can assign it to one of these other folks. Or you can split this task into two tasks and maybe assign it to somebody else to begin from February 2nd and then switch it and then another task to Yakub uh, after he starts employment. So there are many ways to correct it, but identification of this gap with this red border will help you to you know, specifically identify these gaps and then go and take action. So that is how the decision making is made simpler and uh, better by this template. So this is all you need to do in the demand. And you can enter any, any uh, more demand tasks by entering it in this table. So now let's talk about the dashboard. On the dashboard, there are two metrics that I really want you to focus on. So one is the assigned percentage, which is the percentage of the demand that's been assigned. The second is the utilization percentage. Utilization percentage is nothing but demand that has been assigned to a person or a resource divided by the capacity of that resource. You want to make sure that the assigned percentage is 100%. That means all of the you know, um, demand has been assigned to someone. At the same time, you don't want to overutilize resources by exceeding the, I mean, the, the, if the utilization goes above 100%, that means that you have overutilized some resources. So you want to make sure both these metrics, you pay very close attention. Um, the assigned percent should be 100% and utilization percentage should be close to 100%. Um, maybe a little bit over or a little bit less is okay because you may have some buffer, um, but you don't want to be like very low utilization rate. That means that there's a lot of res uh, resource capacity that is not being used and utilized. Okay, so let's say what other things that the dashboard can provide you, a list of projects that are not fully assigned. So you've assigned partially, so you need to go and look at the tasks for these projects and make sure that you assign it, uh, you know, maybe you didn't assign it to any resource or you assigned it a resource who's not even available. So make sure that you correct this. And then you can also do it by roles, um, unassigned uh, hours are clearly pointed out here. So it, you know, um, everything that you need to take action on, on are clearly listed here. Same thing, there may be uh, roles where you have uh, more demand assigned than capacity, so there is a deficit. There may be some roles where there is surplus, so you want to have a look at both. And the most important thing, the resource uh, at the resource level, the deficit, the resources who have deficit and the resources who have surplus. So you, you have both. Let's say, for example, a manager role overall shows that there is a deficit. That could mean that some resources with the manager role could have deficit. Some resources could have uh, surplus. So it's very important that you look at the resource level to take your decision. So, for example, I'm going to, um, let's say, for example, QA. There is so much surplus. So I can click on this QA slicer. Now I can see this total surplus of 4,900 hours. There are three resources who have all this extra uh, surplus capacity. Let's say I click on manager. Um, so here's a good example. So manager role overall has a deficit of 976 hours, but that includes two resources having deficit and one resource has a surplus. So I can clearly see this resource, Valdo, has more availability, Klein has deficit. So maybe we need to go to one of those tasks that Klein has been assigned and reassign it to Valdo so that he can take care of those 704 hours of work because he has availability. This is how you can take smarter decisions and ensure that the assigned percentage is 100%. And the utilization percentage is close to 100%. Um, in a, that would be an ideal scenario. The dashboard provides all these metrics for the entire period of time. In some scenarios, as long as the work is done within the window, it's okay. Uh, but in many cases, 
you want to make sure that the tasks are completed within that tasks time period. Or for example, if you have assigned something to be done on that specific day, you want it to be done on that day. It cannot slip to the next day and you can't make up the hours in the following day. In that scenario, this is where a calendar view becomes helpful. So in the calendar view, there is a lot of flexibility. So I can look at by resource, how many hours this resource is available every single day. This is weekly. Uh, I can change it to daily. I can change it to monthly. So you can see, for example, in the month of May, I have 176 hours of availability for Baker. Um, and I can also change the start date. So I can go to January. So this one says Adams is available Jan, Feb, March, and then not after. But then Baker is available March to you know the May of the following year. So you can see clearly what the capacity is monthly. Um, you can also change this to see demand, uh, and um, demand is negative. And then you can also change this to say capacity minus demand. And now you can identify resources who have more capacity than demand. Uh, the total column represents the entire planning period, but you can also see by month. And that's the benefit of the calendar because you can make sure that we also calculate a utilization percentage identify you know um, resources who have like 272 percent utilization versus Quinn who is 296 uh, but there may be some resources who are only like 23 percent um, utilization so you can identify these gaps and take, um, do the reassignment of tasks to correct the situation there are always slicers on the left which you can use to filter if I only want to see support resources I can do that very easy very flexible the the other two views in this um file the project view provides you um a slightly different view it's like a gantt chart but you can actually also see for each project what is the total and then within that project you can see the resources that are working so let's take this first example this project totally 160 hours in january uh, that is all being done by adams but then when you go through, um, let's say, for example, in you know, in February, Adams is doing 152 hours of work. Yakub is doing 144 hours of work. So you can see within a project who's working, how many hours in any period of time. Uh, this is very helpful. So again, you can do, let's say, for example, I want to look at only certain type of project, only the projects which are categorized as high tech or large scale or low investment. Uh, all of these different categories. So here's a good example. So medium scale projects, there are three, and I can see all the three in one screen by easily filtering on project category. And this is why we define the project categories at the beginning of this video. So you can filter it by resource, project category, project and role, very, very flexible. Um, same thing, we have a resource view where you kind of flip it and say, okay, I know the resource. I want to see all the projects that the resource works on. And you can do this by, we will summarize for the resource, and then we will list all the different projects. So for example, Lopez is working um, on two different projects, and you can see how many hours that is uh, every single month. Let's flip it weekly, and I can see weekly. Again, click off a button, instant calculations, so much flexibility, because each uh, project management scenario could be different and you may be planning things on a weekly basis or a monthly or a quarter, no problem. You can easily switch these views and instantly uh, get the data visualized in the way that you want for your purpose. This is all the template has. Just to summarize again, the this is designed for scenarios where you have capacity and asks or demand. And you want to make sure that all the tasks can be completed and you want to feel good that you have enough capacity to meet the demand and identify any specific gaps and take corrective actions right now before the whole thing begins. So you have a very clear idea that you can achieve all these tasks and also the resources are being utilized efficiently. So the, all of this in one Excel file, and you can simply download this template. I'll provide a link to the product page in the video description. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please put them in the comments. I look forward to seeing you soon in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.